In this video, we are going to examine the reasons for drying fruits and vegetables. Before diving into the scientific aspects of food dehydration and drying, we should look at the various reasons for doing it and explain the basic terms. Dehydration has been defined as the removal of moisture from food as a way of preserving it, and this definition appears in the Encarta Dictionary, which is available with Microsoft Word. Drying is a more generic term and may be considered by some to indicate the removal of all of the water from a material. However, dehydration has a more controlled sense to it and would include removal of various amounts of water to reach a specified moisture content. For our purposes, though, we will use the words interchangeably to simply mean the removal of water. In the following discussion, we will look at a number of reasons for drying fruits and vegetables. This is not intended to be an exhaustive list, and there may certainly be other reasons. Prolonging storage life is one of the main reasons. Food spoilage, of course, is a major problem. Causes of spoilage include the growth of microorganisms such as yeasts, molds, and bacteria and here we see a tomato which is definitely past its prime and supporting a large colony of mold growth. Chemical reactions may also occur and render the food inedible. The presence of water is a key factor in all of these processes. Microorganisms need water to support their life and very few chemical reactions can occur without the presence of water. So think about the water in fruits as being their juice. This juice contains dissolved sugars, which serve as a source of nutrients for microorganisms. This creates an ideal environment for microbial growth and chemical reactions to occur. Removal of water basically shuts down the growth of microorganisms and prevents chemical reactions from taking place. And here we see E. coli, which is a definite problem in food processing. So just how much water is present in something like mangoes? About 80 to 85 percent of the weight of a typical mango may be water. Some mango varieties may contain more and others less than this, and the moisture content may vary with the degree of maturity. A mango weighing 353 grams will contain 300 grams of water. And here's the mathematical equation for that. We take the weight of the mango, 353 grams, times the percentage water, 85 percent, as a decimal fraction, which becomes 0 0.85, and that gives us 300 grams of water. So here we see a mango which weighs 353 grams. The beaker contains 300 grams of water with some added food coloring to make it show up better in the photograph. Only 53 grams of solids will be present in that mango. A hot yellow pepper weighing 56.4 grams was found to contain 93.8 percent water on a weight basis. The weight of the water can be found by taking the weight of the pepper times the percent water as a decimal fraction to give 52.9 grams of water. And here we see that pepper with 52.9 grams of water in a beaker, and the water has been colored to show up better in the photograph. So there will only be 3.5 grams of solids present in that hot yellow pepper. We will look at these calculations in more depth in a later video. But the important thing to note here is that there is an incredible amount of water in the food we eat. If we are to prolong the storage life, we have to remove most of this water. If we don't remove enough water, here's what can happen. And in this case, we have some apple rings which did not have enough of the water removed and they are certainly supporting a good amount of mold growth. Removing water to increase its storage life also reduces the weight of the final product significantly. This might be viewed as a bonus for those who are drying food for export or for shipping to other locations. 
Looking at the various constituents of fresh fruits and vegetables, water is usually the one that is most abundant on a weight basis. 100 kilograms of fresh mangoes at 85% moisture contain 85 kilograms of water and 15 kilograms of solids. Drying the mangoes to 10% moisture will give us 16.7 kilograms of final product and we'll do more on this calculation in a later video as well. Instead of shipping 100 kilograms of fresh mangoes which can spoil easily, the processor only needs to ship 16.7 kilograms of dried mangoes. This saves the expense of shipping 83.3 kilograms of water. It may also have an impact on the load capacity of small vehicles to move material. Weight reduction is also a big advantage to hikers and campers as well as for military rations, etc. Volume reduction may not be obvious at first glance, but there is often a reduction in volume when moisture is removed from a product. So we start with a larger volume and during the course of the drying process the material shrinks down to a smaller volume. Sometimes the structure of the material is such that its volume does not change appreciably. Volume reduction may be viewed on a case-by-case -case basis. So here we see some mango slices in a dryer before the drying process has begun and with time when the final product is ready to be removed you can see just how much the size of each one of these mango slices has changed by viewing the amount of space between the slices. So we definitely have a volume reduction in this case. Volume reduction may also have an impact on the volume or spatial capacity of small vehicles to move the material. Anyone who has ever eaten fresh mangoes and dried mango slices will have noticed the obvious difference in texture. Dried fruits tend to become leathery but still remain pliable and the texture of dried fruits has often been described as being chewy. Let's take a look at some fresh and dried mangoes. Here we see some fresh mango slices and we can compare them to slices of mango which have been dried in a hot air dryer. Note the difference in color and the difference in shape and size. In another drying mechanism using osmotic dehydration which we will describe in a future video we can obtain product that looks like this which is definitely softer and appears to be much more palatable. Along with textural changes, there are also dramatic taste changes due to drying, especially for fruits. Most pronounced among these taste changes is sweetness. Let's use a calculation to show what's happening. So if we take 100 grams of fresh mango slices, they will contain 15 grams of sugar, 1.8 grams of fiber, and 1.1 grams of other solids such as protein, and minerals, etc. This leaves 82.1% as being water. There would be 15% sugar in the fresh mango slices and a total of 17.9% solids. So here's the fresh mango. We take some mango slices weighing 100 grams and what we are looking at then is 15 grams of sugar which are represented by these four and a half sugar cubes. If we dry these 100 grams of mango slices to 10% moisture, we would get 19.9 grams of dried slices. Since there is no loss of solids in drying, we would still have 15.0 grams of sugar present. So here are the 100 grams of fresh mango slices containing 15 grams of sugar. We dry those down and we get 19.9 grams of dried mango slices. They will contain 15 grams of sugar which is then representative of 75% of the weight of those 19.9 grams of dried mango slices. A similar calculation can be done for apples. 
the percent sugar in fresh Royal Gala apples is about 11.1%. We'll take fresh apples and prepare 100 grams of apple rings or apple slices. These apple rings will contain 11.1 grams of sugar, which can be represented by three and a third sugar cubes, or approximately three and a third sugar cubes. Here we have 100 grams of fresh apple rings containing 11.1 grams of sugar. When dried, this will give us 16.0 grams of dried apple rings. We still have 11.1 grams of sugar in these dried apple rings, and that will account for 69% of the weight of the dried apple rings. Adjustments in water intake must be made to accommodate the consumption of dried fruits. It should also be remembered that 16 grams of dried apple slices are equivalent to 100 grams of fresh apple slices, and the difference of the weight is 84 grams of water. Also, 19.9 grams of dried mango slices are equivalent to 100 grams of fresh mangoes. The difference here in weight is due to the removal of 80.1 grams of water. Therefore, you should consume about 80 grams of water with 20 grams of dried mango slices to account for the water difference. Here we see some fresh mango and the dried mango slices. The ones on the left have been air dried and the ones on the right have been dried by a technique called osmotic dehydration plus some air drying as well. Let's take a look at some form changes. Drying can be used to change the form of various fruits and vegetables. We see this in the production of raisins by removing moisture from grapes. The concentration of sugars in the raisins permits them to have a somewhat higher moisture content than other dried fruits. The grapes at the top of the photograph are plump and full of moisture. Meanwhile, the raisins, which have been prepared by drying grapes, are more shriveled and smaller in size. Special plum varieties may also be dried to produce prunes. Form changes expand the potential uses of products. For example, raisins can be used in baking applications where grapes are not appropriate, and this is often done in the case of muffins and loaves and things of this nature. There are occasions when dried fruits and vegetables offer the advantage of easy handling versus their fresh counterparts. This reduces the messiness of consuming fresh juicy fruit by hand. And here we see an example of this as illustrated by the photograph of the rather juicy strawberry. Consider trail mixes for hikers and lunch bag snacks for children. This is an example of a trail mix containing a variety of dried fruits and nuts. Here's another example called craisins. These are dried cranberries which have the appearance of raisins and they're an ideal snack for children in lunch boxes. Convenience and variety offer a major advantage for dried products. Many products offer the just add water and stir approach to preparation. In the photograph on the left we see some dried soup mix which contains noodles and some seasoning. With the addition of hot water and some stirring a rather tasty soup is prepared in a matter of just a few minutes. There are other reasons for drying fruits and vegetables that you may have in mind, and I'd like you to consider those quite seriously. Thank you very much.